Earlier this spring, I was outside and heard an Eastern Phoebe calling. So I found a photo that I could use for reference and I set up my pastel paper and easel and figured I would do a pastel sketch of this bird. The paper I'm using is a sanded paper that's white. I'll put the actual brand into my list here in my YouTube comment section. But um, to get started, I don't like starting paintings on white paper. So I did a watercolor underpainting and I just looked at the colors that I noticed in the photo. I liked the warm and the green. So I put the watercolor onto the sanded paper as a warm up, basically, just to get me away from the white of the paper. And here I have a pencil that will show up well. Um, this is kind of a pinkish red and it will contrast with the green. There's gonna be a lot of green in this painting because that is the background color. Um, and I wanted something that would contrast and show up to sketch in my Phoebe. This first part of the video is in real time. So this is the actual pace I was drawing at. Uh, I like to include that because I found it helpful when other artists have shared with me how they start their paintings. In my case, for a very realistic subject, I have a fairly detailed contour drawing that will help guide me throughout the rest of this painting process. You can freeform it, but for this one, I really, I'm kind of studying Eastern Phoebe versus just making a little bit more from the hip freeform painting. So I definitely want to map out a nice contour for me to work with throughout. With the drawing and the photo side by side here, I can see that I don't have the belly of this bird large enough. It's carrying a little bit more foof in the feathers out front. Um, and I have the leg a little bit farther forward. I'll come back and edit that throughout the drawing. Also, I kind of adjust the angle of the bird back. Like I kind of scoot the back line of the bird a little farther back and Again, drawing is maybe not 50% erasing for me at this point, but there's a lot of erasing that happens because I want to be happy with my contour drawing before I get started with the pastels. Once the pastels go down and I start layering, uh, layering them, I can't really erase into layers of pastel. So at this stage, I want to have a drawing I'm really happy with. I'm going to speed up my drawing a little bit. This is at one and a half times regular speed because you've kind of seen how I lay things out. I have that little crosshairs in the middle. That's just to help me determine the center of whatever surface I'm working on. This is a six by eight. Oop, and I decided I don't like the angle of the beak, so I'm changing that. It needs to be angled a little bit more downward. Um, generally that eye line will line up with the center line and lower mandible for the bird, for songbirds. I'm bringing in some of the kind of highlights along the neck um, mapping out the belly and I did not like the angle of the tail so I'm erasing that back and redrawing that section. So like I said earlier lots of erasing. At this stage I want to have the drawing really well established so that I can go in with pastel and pastel the layers uh, they tend to get messy and it's a little tricky to keep your drawing visible so I want to have that drawing mapped out really well. I'm bringing in the twigs. This bird is perched on a branch that has an interesting section. There's like a Y section. So I wanna get that mapped out and kind of play with that on this size and shape canvas. So it has an interesting composition. Um, this bird is kind of front and center and I don't often do that for my composition. I often like to go off to one side or the other, but in this case, it's such a small size overall. I feel like it works for this one. Um, this one has a nice division between vertical, like the upper part and the lower part of the paper um, with that branch that I feel like I can get away with having the bird's portrait or face kind of front and center. I have my soft tools out and I'm going to get started with my first layers of color. So my drawing's established. I'm going to start with darks. So I'm mixing a brown, like a Van Dyke brown and gray and white 
And I just mix that directly on my soft tool and bring it up to the sanded paper and apply it. I can get just a little bit on there and my uh, soft tool will start running out. So I go refill it on my pan pastels. This works really well because I want the edges to be soft at this point. I want things to be really well blended and I'm just building up layers with the pan pastels. Um, you can build up the layers really slowly because it tends to not fill the tooth on the paper too quickly. If I just went in in pencil, I'd have to be very careful to not just completely fill up the roughness of the paper with that pigment from the pastel pencils. And I'm also not quite ready to bring in pastel sticks. You can see me doing that a little bit for the background, bigger area. So I'm just gonna map on some pastel and green, kind of a main body of that background green. And I will smudge that out with one of my tools here in a second. Pan pastels come with these smudging tools. They're different shapes and they're super helpful because I can use a pastel on its side, rub on color, and then use one of the tools to soften that. It does take off a fair amount of the pigment, but in this case, that's kind of what I want. I want to hopefully continue to see that watercolor background for a while as I'm mapping out uh, the different values and colors that I have in the background. For the sake of time, I edited out some of the background color that I applied. I just built up layers and layers, got the watercolor somewhat covered up, played on that light area with the yellow. I really like that as kind of a backlit area behind the Eastern Phoebe. So I wanted to keep that. The amount of pastel I have on this paper for the background right now, I'm at the point where I can blend with my fingers. And once I have a number of layers on, I will start using my fingers because at that point, I don't want to lose all those layers using one of the soft tools. They will kind of scrape up the pigment. So now you'll see me working with the pastel sticks and also just using my finger to smudge areas. You might also see me working with a small, basically like an eyeshadow tool that comes with the pan pastel kit that I purchased. And those are helpful for little teeny tiny areas, maybe around the beak or perhaps around the eye or some of the details on the branch. So um, I will continue to work away on this and just, again, it's bringing in different colors. You'll see some interesting colors for the sticks. With pastel, I don't get to mix color, which is very strange because I'm an oil painter. That's what my background is. Um, and with pastel, you have to come in with that pure color and figure out how is it gonna blend in this painting. This one was a little bit of a challenge because it's a Phoebe is a gray bird, but there's so many other colors there and figuring out the balance between grays and like and more vibrant colors in the background or figuring out is it a blue gray? Is it a brown gray? Is it a red gray? All of that is how you play up and build interest in that painting, even though it looks like kind of a drab color. So this, this was both a challenge, but also something I wanted to play around with because there's a lot of that in the landscape. I will also be out using pastels like plein air in landscape painting as well. There are some really cool features to pastel. While you're watching some of the layers go on and the blending take place, I thought I would dive into that a little bit. I mentioned I'm, a, I'm an oil painter and I adore oil painting. I still have my kit and I use it. Um, there's nothing like it. But when I'm out in the field doing a plein air painting uh, from life, I have to pack up my panels covered in wet oil paint. And I have a way to do this that works pretty well, but pastel, none of that. It's just dry pigment. So I don't have to worry about transporting a wet panel. Um, because it's just on paper, I can take this off of my panel and just put it uh, in a kit, like a folder even, cover this up with some glassine, kind of like a wax paper, to make sure that the pigment doesn't get rubbed. And I can transport it back in a sketchbook, in a folder, what have you. So it's a little bit more streamlined setup and I don't have to wait for dry time. I often will have five or six different sketches going 
Um, and with oil painting, I get impatient and I make my paintings too muddy because I don't wait for them to dry properly, which is bad. Don't do that. Um, with pastel, I don't have to wait for any dry time, which is really awesome. Um, it's one of the reasons I like it. Another reason that I thought was very interesting, when I was training uh, at a school in the Twin Cities, it's called the Atelier Studio of Fine Art, um, I, there was an artist there that mentioned that pastel is a bridge between drawing and painting, and that really stuck with me. I didn't have a chance to study with this artist, which I regret, but I thought it was a very interesting comment to make because they were training artists in pencil, drawing, charcoal drawing, and oil painting. But they did have a couple courses in pastel, which I wasn't familiar with. So as you see me working on this, one of the things I enjoy about using pastels is it's easy to always go back and adjust my drawing. If I decide, hey, you know what? This is really off kilter. I can come back in with a pencil, um, I can come back in with one of the pastel sticks and adjust where that drawing is at. Right now, looking at this, I can still tell the body of my Phoebe isn't round enough. It's much poofier. It's just kind of fluffed out against the cold. So as I continue with color and value, I'll also be adjusting the shape. Now, you can do this in an oil painting as well. But for me, I find it's difficult. I find it really tricky to reach back into layers that are wet um, and adjust a drawing very easily when I'm working on an oil painting. Maybe it's just me, but I find it a little frustrating. So for that reason, I really wanted to start exploring pastel a bit more. This whole middle section of the painting, I am discovering just how many grays and browns make up an Eastern Phoebe, and also trying to call out those same colors that are in the branch. I don't want them to be the same same. It has a more reddish overall feel than the bird does, um, but I do want that to be incorporated into the painting. Um, so I'm just playing around, bouncing all over the place. I am grabbing different sticks of color, testing out uh, different types of browns, different types of grays. I'm using some of my pastel pencils to add little highlight areas on the feathers. Again, I can get into little details between the primaries and the coverts and the different layers of feathers. And I'm trying to strike a balance between having detail, but also respecting that this is, it's a small painting. There's only so much detail I can add, but I do want to keep pushing this because I'm not happy. It, well, it's not that I'm not happy. It's just not quite there yet. So again, with pastel, I don't have to wait for this to dry to come back over it with different layers, which is fantastic. Um, I'm able to just continue working on it. And because I don't have to wait for that dry time, I have to remind myself to work slowly and be patient. One thing that you'll notice as I'm handling each pastel stick I'm trying to use a really light touch. It is so easy for me to take the pastel and just be absolutely enamored with the intensity of the color and use it like a crayon. Like a little kid would take a crayon to paper and just layer it up. The problem with that is it fills up the tooth on the paper and I can't do all these layers. And if I've learned anything as a painter in the past, gosh, 10 years, it's to be patient, and to build up layers. So because this is a studio painting, I have time for that. Once I get the bird to a point where I feel like, yep, I'm happy with where this is going, I switch back to the background because that's fallen behind a bit. So I'm going to continue with the layers of my background. Um, one of the things that I was playing with in this painting was we have really vibrant greens, like new spring greens and that's kind of opposite the really muted tones and values on the Phoebe. So I have to kind of play around with my different pastels that I've got. I'm noticing I need to add quite a range of greens, like more neutral greens to my pastel collection. So, but I'm playing around with how to layer that up to create that kind of push-pull between my subject and my background.
After adding a bunch of really bright greens, kind of a blue green, a very yellow green, um, I'm gonna switch to the branch. I wanted to amp up the contrast, so I'm adding some very dark brown, a little bit of black to it. I'm gonna start kind of mapping out the edges of this branch. What I'll have to do is get those colors put into place and then I'll come back in and smudge those a bit because I want the edges to be slightly softer than what I see on the Phoebe. The Phoebe is my main focal point, so when I make uh, a drawing with a very distinct subject like this, um, that subject, I want it to be called out by having hard edges, as hard as they're gonna be with a feather, but still a very crisp edge. That branch is not as much the focal point, so you can see me here with the blending tool, just softening that edge between the branch and the background. Doesn't need to be super soft, but I don't want it to be a, a hard line. I'm adding a little bit more dark to the eye. That gets a little bit lost as I build up the layers and it does have this really deep dark um, and a little bit of contrast between the eye. And one of the things for birds, when I'm finishing a pastel like this, I make sure to add back in the bright spot on the eye. So there's a little reflection of the sky that shows up in the curvature of that eyeball. That's something that will really add life to a painting. It can be sitting there looking very finished, but there's something missing and it's often just pay a little extra attention to calling out that highlight on the eye. This is getting very close to finished. I'm playing around with a couple highlight areas on the back and going up into the crest of this bird. I have to make sure to transition from the kind of whitish really light gray white on the back up into the crest I want to transition that's into that brown but a couple steps up from the darker value on the main part of the head again this is the push pull that you get into when I when you're at pretty close to finishing a painting so what I'm editing out of this video is all the time I'm spending standing back from it just looking at the painting so there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of think time happening and that doesn't record well on video, but that is very much a part of the process. Uh, and again, this portion with the color and the pastels, this is at two times regular speed. So I don't make the decisions that quickly. As I get closer to the end, I have to really remind myself to slow down a bit and just, you know, like go get a cup of coffee, chill out, come back and look at it. Even put it away for the day if you have the ability to and come back to it later. Sometimes I just don't have the chance to do that because I've got a deadline or I have to go to work tomorrow so I know I won't be able to look at it while it's still fresh in my brain. But there's kind of a back and forth between pushing your way through it and just stopping, particularly if you're just not quite sure what it needs. One of the last things I'm adding to this in addition to just little details, I'm continuing to work on both the drawing and some of the values for uh, how that's sitting, even playing around with the edges between the bird and the background. Um, I added a little bit of more neutral gray green to the surface of my background because I felt like the color was just a little bit too saturated. The other thing I'm still contemplating on this one, even after I sign it here with my initials is, this is a very green painting and I'm kind of debating adding some areas of muted red as a contrast. But here at the very end, you can see the bird up close versus my photo that I was working from. And for a sketch, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna call it good. Um, I'm gonna let this one rest. And again, as a little six by eight, I might come back to this as a reference for a bigger painting at some point. But for now, this one, I'm gonna leave where it's at. Thank you for following along in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's helpful if you try out painting in pastel. You can see the study behind me and I did a little mini study even before I started that one and I played around with a little bit more of that reddish, that rusty red in the background. If you enjoyed this, if you would give it a thumbs up, a like, that would help out a ton. Um, and please consider following along. I will be doing more of these painting tutorials and I have lots of other videos on my site, Laurel Sunberg Studio.